The following program is brought to you by Cloudcast Media, a podcast leader in developing shows to elevate local brands, local stories, and local storytellers. Cloudcast, bringing ears and minds home. I'm Drew Schlossberg of Cloudcast Media, and we are so pleased to have in the studio with us. Uh, hopefully, this is not the only time you'll be in the studio with us, uh, Jill. Be uh, many more, and that is Jill Hall. Uh, she is an artist, she is an educator, and she is an author of, of three books. We're going to talk about some of those, too. And uh, full disclosure, uh, Jill and I have uh, known each other for quite a while. So it's, uh, it's good seeing you, Jill. Great to see you, too. Thanks for having me. First and foremost, I hope everybody is safe and healthy in this COVID-19 era. Yes. Uh, they are. Yeah, yes. I'm, yeah, I'm glad, glad to hear I this. I am, and my my friends are right well, now. That, that's right. Yeah, that's important. Um, talk a little bit about your background as an educator and then how it weaved into becoming artist and author and everything in between. Okay. Well, um, my calling had always been to be a teacher. That was from the young age, that's what I wanted to be. And so um, I went to school and um, got all my licenses, and then I became a teacher for the school district. And I worked for over 20 years in inner city schools. Well, great. Mostly um, elementary and middle school. Right. So, uh, and then, uh, you know, you were. But you always had a passion for arts, didn't yes, you? So yes, yes. Talk about that. Yes. So I started taking ballet when I was a little girl. And then as I got older, I started taking jazz and modern dance. And then I started to do musical theater uh, uh, shows and uh, community theater and some semi-professional and just really loved it. And then um, as I got older, I became a mosaic artist and I used found objects in my work. Uh, and that that so my a found visual object artist. is just what it sounds like. You found these somewhere. Yes, um, like in the street or in your yard back sales. Oh, funny. Okay. And um, thrift shops. Sometimes I'll pick up something from the street, right, and now right. I get offerings. So I'll come home, and there'll be a bag on my front step, and I'll open it up, and I'll say, "Oh, that's so and so's dishes uh, that I've had dinner at their house, and this is." You know, and they drop it off a broken piece. Uh, and, dishes. and you make some mosaics out of it. Did yes. you ever incorporate the art in your teaching? Yes, okay. I always focused my curriculum on the arts. And uh, the last um, school that I worked at, I was a magnet coordinator for um, arts and and integrating the arts into everything that we did. Right. You know, and listen, you've always been very benevolent with your time and then with your treasure and so forth. And you were uh, the chair of the Creative Catalyst program through the San Diego. Foundation. Uh, talk about that. Yes, okay. Well, that's a really wonderful program that we started where we um, gave money to nonprofits and a specific artist that has a dream of something they've always wanted to do that will catapult their career. And we've given 45 um, fellowships to different San Diego artists. Um, and then recently when COVID hit, uh, we were getting ready to launch another um, group of artists, and instead we took um, the money and we rolled it into a fund so that we could s- support nonprofits and their workforce at this time. Right, because uh, it uh, was sort of a quadruple whammy, certainly, on the space of visual performing arts, wasn't it? Yes, it's, it still yeah. is. It yeah. still is. It's a, it's a very, and, and our artists are doing, are really, really struggling. Right. Right, right. Um, so I know that's uh, very important. You've been raising money. Uh, there was a uh, stories in the paper about uh, what you folks are doing, uh, and you know one of the folks who bring a lot of uh, her guests on our show, Susan Clausen. Matter of fact, had one on today. Tanya Mantooth, who is the uh, artistic director and uh, for the San Diego International Film Festival, and so. Yes. Um, but Tanya had a story in today's paper, and Susan and the Theater Alliance group was featured a couple of days ago in the paper. So, uh, it, you know, I think what's great about it, and I know you were are very passionate about community theater groups as well. Scripps Ranch, the uh, Scripps the Ranch has a theater, of course, and Oceanside Theater Company, and so forth. Do you work with them quite a bit with this uh, the groups you're in? Well, we give grants to right. any um, any of the organizations in the county. 
that apply. So um, if they qualify and right. then there's a panel that looks looks at it to decide. Now for phase one, right. we gave two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to um, thirty two different organizations. Right. Uh, so we had a, a large amount of money we raised, and now uh, for phase two, we're raising money for BIPOC artists, individual artists that are really struggling, and the money can be used for their um, either their housing right. or their food or rent. Um, and then there's a, a panel that will be making that decision. And then we'll also be working on a third phase that uh, coming up soon. So if our listeners want to help support those efforts, is there a website they should go to? Yes. Yeah. Um, look up Sandy, San Diego Arts and Culture uh, Challenge okay. Fund. All right. Just Google that and then yes. they can be able to contribute because yes. you know anyone who's been touched by the arts, and that's a lot of us, of course, mm-hmm. want to uh, make sure that helping out those especially those artists that are struggling that yes. everything's been shut yes. down i'm drew schlossberg of cloudcast media and we're chatting with a uh, jill hall she's an artist and an educator and an author which brings us to uh, my next topic over here uh three books best-selling books congratulations on that thank you when did you when was the epiphany that hit you that i need to become an author or was there one <laughs> well I I had been teaching for over 20 years, and then um, as the arts, the pendulum swung and the arts weren't really popular to to, uh, from the district, so I decided to take some time They should have been, by the way, if I can get get in my little soapbox here. Yes, you and me both. Right, right. You know, and so I left the district for political reasons because I didn't think they were making decisions that were good for children. Right, right. And so um, I had uh, at that time started to really work on my mosaics and then I wanted to write I just all of a sudden it just hit me I wanted to write and I thought I would write children's books or maybe a memoir about being in the classroom and so instead I joined a group and characters started to appear on the page from nowhere and I just kept writing because I wanted to find out what was going to happen with them. And uh, so out of it came uh, my first novel, uh, The Black Velvet Coat. And uh, then my second novel, when I was almost finished with that, it was getting ready for publication. My second novel started to appear, characters from nowhere. And I just have kept going. You know, it's funny when you said that came out of nowhere or they came out of somewhere like uh, your head right and through your experiences I mean they just don't appear somewhere right I write everything by hand and so I call it the the heart hand connection so I don't use my head I use my heart to write and so it's it's I call it intuitive intuitive writing so okay is that a term you just made up or other people have used it but um Yes, and so some of us, in it's starting to become more right. uh, popular over time. Right, so years is a trilogy, is that correct? Yes, it Talk is. Talk about that. Yes, well, uh, all three of my books have Anne, a uh, San Francisco artist, and she makes mosaics and artwork with found objects. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> and, um, she your alter ego? What? Is she your alter ego? I don't know. Sometimes she is. You have is. to read the book and find out, right? Well, yes, yeah, so her... Um, in each of the books, she buys a vintage find, and then it's also about a woman from the past who originally owned that uh, vi- that vintage find. Right. And so in the black velvet coat, she finds a black velvet coat in a thrift shop, and then it's also about the woman from the noir 1960s who originally owned the coat. And then in The Silver Shoes, she is in San Francisco, and she buys a pair of silver shoes, and in, it's uh, the woman who originally owned them was a debutante in the 1929. Okay. And when the stock market crashes, she becomes entwined in the world of burlesque. And uh, in that, it was fun because I got to use my theater experience sure, sure. to tie that in. Sure. And now uh, my next book is coming out in October, uh, The Green Lace Corset. And uh, Anne goes to Flagstaff, Arizona, and buys a green lace corset outfit in a resale boutique. And it's also about Sally Sue Sullivan, who is kidnapped on a train by a bank robber and taken 
to the Wild West in Flagstaff. And there she sees um, saloon girls and starts to fantasize what it might be like to wear a, you know, a wild outfit like a green lace corset outfit. Do you have one? Yes, I do. I had <laughs> I, my corset. I had a costume designer make it. I was going to say. And it's on the cover of my book. In fact, all three of the items on my book covers, I actually sent to the East Coast to the cover designer. And she photographed them and put together the, the covers. And so, yeah, I have a whole outfit. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and it's real with a saloon skirt. And I wear my boots and fishnet stockings with it. It's really fun. Very, and, very, very. Yeah. So are you doing, we're chatting with uh, Jill Hall. She's an artist, former educator, and an author of three uh, uh, books, uh, two best-selling. And we're very confident the third one will be uh, best-selling as well. Where do they get their books? On Amazon? Uh, they can get their books um, anywhere books are sold. Okay. I always recommend, if you can, to buy from your independent bookstore. That makes sense. And if they don't have them in stock, they're happy to order them for you. And I really, we really want to keep our independent bookstore. Absolutely. So that's, I mean, you can get them everywhere books are sold. Right. Um, and they're on um, ebooks also. Right. So Jill Hall, just look on that and you'll see the the books here. So the Jill, Jill G. Hall. Excuse me, Jill G. G. Hall. G. Hall. I don't want to get my I had to differ differentiate myself from uh, yeah, other Jill well, Halls. There's probably a lot of Jill Halls Lots run, of them. running around the world. Mm-hmm. Not that many Drew Schlossbergs, and let's be thankful for that. Uh, you know, So Jill, the book, that uh, the latest book, so it's not out there yet. October they'll come out, right? It's available now for, for pre-order. Okay. So you can pre-order it, and but then it will come it. Yeah, yeah. really soon. In uh, October. In October, yeah. yes, October. Yes. Are you doing any, you know, bookstores? Are you doing any signings? Talk about that. Yes. Well, uh, COVID, of course, has put put a real right. uh, wrench in um, doing uh, public events. And uh, so it's for me, even though this isn't my first rodeo because it's my third book. Right. I'm um, really being challenged uh, to figure out how to get the word out there and celebrate with my friends. This and is one way of doing it right here. Thank and you. so, Thank yeah, you. and this is one way. Thank you, Drew. Of course. So um, my first event will be virtual and it's with Warwick's on the 24th of October at four o'clock. Okay. And we're doing it at four o'clock because then the good thing is my friends and and family and readers from across the country can join us because it'll be virtual and i have a lot of fun things planned i have special guests that are going to be joining us and nice. i'll be talking about my books and showing pictures and of my artwork uh that have actually uh have been inspired by the uh the green lace corset and um and then i'm going to be doing also an event in november with the um Point Loma Library yeah. and La Playa Books. They're nice. going to collaborate. So, and that'll be virtual right. also. And do you have a website? Yes, j- uh, JillGHall.com. Okay, we come back from break. We're going to chat more with Jill G. Hall, uh, the uh, artist and uh, former educator. I guess you're always an educator and author, of course. Um, one of the things I want to dive into when we come back from break, uh, Jill, is what advice would you give to uh, burgeoning uh, writers? I know you're involved with San Diego Writers, Inc. and do a lot of workshops yourself. Um, everyone, uh, I think, I shouldn't say everyone, but I know a lot of people, I want to be the next novelist and all that. And you became it in that aspect. So we'll chat about that and then... Then, you know, also maybe go back to the art uh, work that you do and get people to get engaged with that. All right. We're going to be right back with Jill G. Hall. Uh, I'm Drew Schlossberg of Cloudcast Media. You're listening to another edition of Spotlight on the Community. Cloudcast 180. Powerful people. Powerful stories. 180 seconds. Welcome to Cloudcast 180, the three-minute lightning round with changemakers here in San Diego. We're here with Ed Heiner, 20-year Navy SEAL, best-selling author, and education entrepreneur. Ed, welcome to the Cloudcast 180. Thanks for having me. Your book was called First Fast Fearless, so let's hit this fast and fearlessly. Uh, Real quick, you created a program to help change lives of high school students around the country. It's called Sealpreneurship. Tell our audience what it's all about. Well, it's about leaning yourself, getting a PhD in me to teach kids how to take care of themselves and lead themselves first, and how to be their own entrepreneur, intrapreneur, if you will. Is it something you think uh, public education is lacking, this concept of self-leadership? Absolutely. It's a mindset that 
kids don't get. You know, my son doesn't get it in his school. The kids don't get it. It's uh, something that, you know, we, we're educating them, but to be mentally tough and be able to take contr- charge of themselves and accountable for themselves is very unique. Okay. I've seen an overview of your curriculum, 23 evolutions, and you have a 23-minute podcast series. So what's up with 23? Chromosomes, right? It's all in all of us. We're all the same. 99.9% of everybody in this world is the same. And we use those chromosomes, 23 pairs, which was one of the concepts we teach as swim buddies, never be alone. Mm-hmm. Always work with someone else, collaborate, and be out there. Well, that's a lesson for life for sure. Ed, uh, you were in charge of basic and advanced training for the U.S. Navy SEALs, and I mentioned your 20-year SEAL. Tell our audience the greatest lesson from the SEALs that have changed you forever? Probably in the back of a helicopter one night in Iraq before I was getting ready to fly into an Al-Qaeda target. It dawned on me that when a pilot said, you have this many souls on board, it dawned on me that the opposite of fear is love. It's not else. I don't fight for what I hate in front of me. I fight for what's beside me and behind me that I love. Wow, it's a powerful concept. Wow. Uh, You've talked a lot about the blue collar scholar as a concept. Fascinating. Tell our audience, what is the Blue Collar Scholar as it relates to your SEALpreneurship program? It's a mental concept where people take control. Don't outsource their life. Look, we're going to have people that are in white coats, suits and ties, doctors, PhDs. That's fine. Listen to that and learn your information from them. But eventually, you got to be that mechanic in your own life. you got to turn the wrench. This is happening. So basically, take control of your own life. Use what you can use from other people. Discard it, get what you can't, and make that your own. Leadership is something that you do. It's uh, You do with people, not to them. And one of the best forms of leadership I learned in the back of that helicopter is called mom. Ed, Focus thanks. on mission, others, and me. Mission, others, and me. Ed, thank you for being here. This has been the Cloudcast 180. We hit it fast and fearlessly. We're out. Cloudcast 180. Powerful people, powerful stories, 180 seconds. I'm Drew Schlossberg of Cloudcast Media, and we are back with Jill G. Hall. She is an author. Her latest book is coming out in October, The Green Lace Corset. It is the third of a trilogy. Uh, it, well, let me ask you this. So if that's the th- trilogy, are you done with these now? Yes. So that, are you going to go on to your next trilogy? I'm working on the next book. Okay, right. That's but, not part of the trilogy. I don't think, but you never know what's going to happen. That's right. But this trilogy ends with... Uh, I think so, because I think I finished Anne's story, who's in all three books. Okay, but you never know. The Anne can always yes. come back somewhere down yes. the road And also, that. I want to point out yeah. that I write them as standalone books. So you don't have to read the first book to be able to read the second and nice. third book. Nice. What I tell people is to read, the, read whatever era um, interests them most, and then... If they like, they read the third book first, then they can go back. If they like my writing, they can go sure. back and read the first one as a prequel. Are the, is the writing very similar in all three? <clears throat> well, it's my voice, right. my writing style, but they have a different, fl- each one has a different flavor right, to right, it. Right, right, exactly. So, you know, we talked about, you know, your experience as an educator, of course, your passion for art, dancing, ballet, and all that business. I'll certainly led a lot of the ideas that you got in the book over here. Um, so what advice would you give to people that at any age, you know, whether they're in high school, whether they're in middle school, or whether they are retired or anything in between, if they want to become writers, what's the best advice? Um, find your tribe. Find other writers, uh, people that you can, can write with, community or that can help you with your work find a mentor um, I we're really lucky in San Diego because we have San Diego Writers Inc which right. is a nonprofit for writers and um, I'm an instructor there and we have all sorts of classes and workshops for lots of different types of writers and uh, and right now and it's we're based at Liberty Station but right now we've um, are teaching everything online I was gonna say right and we have a lot of zoom classes and I teach a class on Tuesday it's a drop-in writing class it's only five dollars right and we do intuitive writing nice so yes. so how would you define intuitive writing so I define it as letting your heart uh, hand connection. I don't use a computer. I write first of all with in my journal, really uh, by hand okay. the first draft. 
The and whole first draft. Yeah, the first draft, it's all out of order. And my characters tell me what to do. And then I, um, when I have a lot of the writing, a few journals finished, I put stickies on the pages that are worthy, and I start typing it up. How interesting. Yes. Is that unique to you? Do you know other authors that do that? Did you learn that technique from someone, or did you just pick it up yourself? Well, my mentor is Judy Reeves, yes. and that's who I started writing with. Of course. And we're still uh, really good friends, and we still write together. And does she use that process? Of yes. What you just described? That's so yes. interesting. Yes. Do you mention that when you because everyone's unique and they're all going to find what makes them most comfortable and easy to do um have you seen other people that have been in your classes that now take that approach yes yes right right because uh-huh. everyone's got a different yes. way of a, a, uh-huh. a style of writing. and we all we all it, that's what works for me right but everyone has their own their own style a lot of my friends that are writers have to have an outline or they can't start and right. some writers need to know what's going to happen at the end sure, before they start the book but for me right. if i knew what was going to happen at the end i wouldn't really want to keep writing yeah yeah it's no it's all individual you're absolutely right we're <laughs> chatting with jill hall she is uh the author of a trilogy of books one that's going to be coming out in october uh, shout those dates out again where you're going to be uh, doing some virtual book signing october so to speak. 24th at um at four o'clock through warwick's and you can go to their website uh, they already have the link up there or you can also go to my website jill g hall Com. No, that, that's terrific. So, uh, you know, again, uh, you know, follow the heart. That's important. Um, you know, a million years ago, Jill, you know, I was a journalist, okay? Mm-hmm. And people would always ask me, you know, how did you get into this and why and what advice do you give? And I was a sports writer uh, for a small bi-weekly for several years up in uh, North County and a columnist. And I said, listen, um, depending on whatever you want to write about, uh, read. You got to be a reader. And, you know, I started mine because I couldn't read enough in the L.A. Times sports section where I grew up in, in L.A. And I just read and read and read and read. And that was my passion. Um, did you do you do a lot of reading? Oh, yes. Okay. I always have a book on my nightstand. Right. I read every night. Right. Um, sometimes I'll take a break and I'll sit in the afternoon and and read a chapter um i'm always reading and i mostly read uh, novels because right. i'm a novelist right. and historical fiction is my favorite right um because i have uh, my books are actually dual timeline so i have someone from the present and the past right in the books in the my books right yeah. right right but when i read i read all sorts of books but mostly novels will you continue that moving forward you think always have dual timelines in your books um, my next book that I'm writing, I hope, is not a dual timeline because it's really hard. It's very complicated. Right, right. Because it's like it's writing two full books. Right. Then you have to weave them together, and you have to have strings that tie them together. Right. And so when the, my first book, I didn't even know that it was uh, d- that they were connected. Right. And then as I kept writing, I realized I was writing instead of two different stories, I was right. writing one story. Right, right, exactly. So, you know, for those uh, people, we talked about this in the first segment, because uh, your passion with uh, artists and with writers and all this business, um, why don't you shout out that group you work with in case someone wants to jump on and help support those artists that are struggling? Um, San Diego Arts and Culture Challenge Fund, and it's actually held at the San Diego Foundation. Right, right. You know, I think uh, getting back to the you know author uh, aspect of it is, you know, do you see, do you feel that more people are taking a dip into becoming writers than they did? Has COVID-19, since sort of forced people, forced people inside, mm, maybe I need to start writing more versus when they were not? Yes. Oh, yes. A lot of people are looking at their lives uh, right now and, and thinking about, guy, you know, I better get that book done. Or they're thinking how I'm, I want to be more fulfilled and right. they have free time. So right. we have a lot of people that are coming, taking workshops on Zoom. Also, we have now have people from across the country that are taking classes with San Diego Writers, Inc., uh, because they can. Right. Um, and that's that's been really exciting to see. Right. Are there other San Diego Writers Inks, so to speak, in other cities and in other states? Or is that pretty much unique to what we do down here? Oh, a lot of cities have uh, writing centers. Right, of course. Uh, they're all different, though. Right. Some cities have, have bigger ones than others. Right. Uh, we've really worked hard, though, to make ours really nurturing gotcha. and welcoming. Uh, and so it's... It, 
for any level of writers. Right. So that's where you sort of differentiate uh, San Diegans and come in. We want to chat with you. We won't intimidate you. Just put mm-hmm. words on paper and we'll start yes, from there. Yes, exactly. Yeah, no, that's exactly. Great. It's, yes. Yeah. We're chatting with Jill G. Hall. She is an artist and an author and a former educator. I'm talking about her newest book that will be coming out in October, The Green Lace Corset. However, you can pre-order it right now. Um, and can you pre-order it through independent bookstores now? or do you Yes, you okay. just contact your independent bookstore right. and say, I know it's not out yet, but I want it as soon as it's available. Right, right. And they can um, order it for you. No, that, that's good. Do you ever get, i uh, got a few minutes here to go, do you ever get ideas uh, with your friends to say, oh, i got a great idea for your next book, Jill. You should do x does that happen that happens and i tell them (laughs) it's their story so why don't they write it and they can come to san diego writers inc and take some classes and workshops very good that's the last time you hear from them yes no no a lot of them are really you think i could do it i'm like yes you can everybody can write i didn't have any training when i started sure i just jumped in and started to write and i'm i'm one of those type and as an educator too i'm one of the type who i learn by doing and i think a lot of people learn by doing Right. So any movie rights ready on these? Not yet, but uh-huh. I'm I'm up for it. I'd uh, love to have my media rights. Okay, very, sold. very good over yes. here. So maybe when this is a full-length uh, movie, we'll have you back on with Steven Spielberg, because I'm sure he's going to pick this up. What do you think? Good? Well, I'd like to have a series. <laughs> oh, because okay. I have... Se- <laughs> yes, because we're all home watching t- all the great TV you series. Se- right, right. So because I have this three books with this, the same character through there all of go. them, I think it would be an a really great series. Well, let's make that happen. Let's say you we started it here first on our Spotlight on the Community show. Okay. How's that sound? Let's do it. Jill, any final comments? Just thank you very much, Drew, for having me. pleasure. And mm-hmm. for supporting the community the way you do. Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. You've been chatting with Jill G. Hall. She is an artist and a, an author and a former educator. And keep an eye out for her next book, The Green Lace Corset, uh, that you can pre-order now and go to her website, talk about some of the places where you can see her virtually. And she does some signings and all that business. I'm Drew Schlossberg of Cloudcast Media. You've been listening to another edition of Spotlight on the Community. Thank you for listening to a podcast from Cloudcast Media, the digital media home for leading local brands. When it comes to amplifying your brand, a Cloudcast-sponsored show offers unbeatable value. Learn more at cloudcast.us.